so we're assembling the y-axis components. So as always, make sure you have all the components listed on the drawing. This will change over time, so there's no point in me listing out exactly what I've got here. But make sure you have the quantities, follow the parts, and you have them all ready for assembly. In addition to this, we've got one of these, which will help make sure that our shafts are parallel to each other and to the frame. And then a couple of Allen head socket key things as well. They're obviously to fit these and these. So whatever size you need to fit whatever you purchase. Well, yes, that. If you buy these uh, M3 socket head, then it's a two and a half mil. If you buy the button head M3s, it'll be two mil. And these are, well, this specific one is 1.5. If you buy them elsewhere, they might be a different price. Uh, they, well, regardless of the price, they might be a different size. So let's get straight on with assembly. Diagrams are here. You just have to follow along with what's going on. Looking at the stepper motor, mine already has a cable, which is already uh, plated as well. This is a four braid plat, I think it's called. You can just Google up how to do that. It makes it a lot easier to manage the wire. And also, I believe, reduces interference because of the uh, crossing. That might be complete nonsense. It might have to be only twisted. But it does significantly help with management of the wire. So I would suggest doing it. So start by, I'm going to start with this side here. So get whichever bracket fits. This is, I mean, it's labeled 12, step amount. Yep, it's that side. Mine are printed in different colors, but that's just because I ran out of blue. Hence, this one's also yellow. So this is the view we're looking at to begin with. Obviously, just follow the numbers as it says. Follow the numbers and screw together. And you can't see anything that I'm doing. What an idiot. Right, apologies for the missed information at the start. All I did was assemble this. And remember, this screw, this M5, has to go in before you put the stepper motor in, just because of reasons. What if I put that here? Is that a good place? That might be a very good place. So yes, this screw, you can't put it in after the stepper motor, but you can put it in before very easily. Right, next we should put this little M3 nut in the top. Again, this is probably going to be quite a tight fit. If you wish to, you can cut it out with a knife just to give yourself a little bit of clearance. And I'm going to take probably 20 minutes to put this in. So, yes. Maybe I'll make this hole a little bit easier to put it in. It is always better to have slightly too much material here than too little, because as soon as you have too little, it's difficult to add it in, but it's easy to cut a little bit away, just to make it a little bit easier to assemble. I mean, the reason I probably got this is just because of this sort of elephant's foot effect that you get when you press your print down and your print head's a bit close to the bed. But, you know, if your print is a bit better than mine, or something like that, then you'd be able to do this a little bit easier. Here's what that looks like when you put it in. It just sits in there and you should be able to see it in that hole. If you haven't, if you can't, then uh, just push it in a little further. If you pushed it too far, then you can probably use an Allen key, wedge it in the end and just sort of try to pull it out a little bit. So now I think we've prepped that enough. We have this little part that goes on the top and that just goes in the side. So, oh dear, don't want to do that. And into there is another 10 mil screw. This one just threads into the plastic. So get it in place. Use a little bit of force to start that thread. Right, 
My horns have come out a little smaller than they should have done. So now through that hole you should be able to see that screw in there and then that's held in by the only 12mm screw that we have for this assembly. Should be this one here because I marked it by putting a nut on it when I sorted them out. That just goes in there. There's no need to do this tight, especially right now, because we need to make sure that our Yep, so that fits in there nicely. So we'll leave that as it is for now. That's ready to go in. Finally, through the top, we have another. We're going to be using one of these in a 7mm screw, a number 7, which is a 10mm screw. On the top of the stepper motor, we need to put our little shaft. So this will vary for each stepper motor because they probably have different length shafts. But if I measure the length of my shaft, you'll be able to work it out from that. So this is not a perfect way to measure, I know, but it will do for now. So the shaft here, let's take this off. The shaft here is about 23 millimeters from the mounting face for the screws. So mine will be sitting on that D face and then just flush with the top. You can probably adjust this once it's in situ, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I would recommend a D shaft for your uh, stepper motors. Oh, that didn't work very well, did it? There we go, so now that's prepared, that's ready. We can put that to one side while we do the other side. This side is fairly similar, there are certain similarities. The bracket, for example, is an identical mirror. To be honest, I needn't have published both files, you can probably just do one and mirror it in your slicing software. But for your convenience, I have Set to both. And again for this motor, same place. You don't want to torque it down too much, but just enough. As with all things, too tight is a thing. Remember the screw that goes. Remember the screw that goes in here. It's got to go in. Oh come on! There we go. I'm just blind as a bat. Put that in there. And again, ten mil screws in the top holes that are slightly too small. Remember, not too tight, just tight enough. There we go. So now let's look at these little brackets. These have just got to be filled with nuts and things to uh, hold the shafts. So this first one, this yellow one, is on this drawing down here. They have 
they all have 60mm screws that go through to do the clamping and an M3 nut on the back, so they're all quite easy to assemble. The nut just should slot into the back nicely. There we go. Quite a tight fit, so that when you tighten it, as you tighten, that screw will pull that nut nicely into there. Can go quite a long way in. There you go, and then it starts to get too tight. So now you can back it off a bit. That nut's nicely held in position. And now you can tighten as needed. Again, 10 mil screws will be holding this to the frame. I can preload them now, but to be honest, it doesn't really help all that much. And again, I'm struggling to push them through. So these two larger ones, exactly the same deal. This pushes in one side, but you don't really need to push it in. You just put the screw on the other side and pull it through. That should position it nicely and Pull it much straighter and with much less pain to your hands. So we can obviously preload these screws but it makes literally no difference. It's just a sort of clarity of mind that we've got it all and it's all done. The last nut placed on one side, screw on the other. Samey, samey, samey. Oopsie daisy. So you're just screwing this one in until it's tight and then you can loosen it off a bit. Again, M5 screws. And that's you set up ready to assemble to the frame.